If you're approaching retirement and in the later stages of your career, and you happen to be like most other folks who are also approaching retirement, you probably care a lot about tax. You probably care even more about wanting to pay less tax. Well, in this video, we're gonna help identify the seven or eight sources of income that can actually be tax-free in Canada in your retirement. Now, there's a, a, a final piece of, of tax-free income that we're gonna unpack as well. Most probably wouldn't think of it. You gotta wait till the very end for us to unpack what that mystery source of income is. Now, depending on your situation, there are actually two ways that we could look at this issue. And it depends on whether you own shares of a privately held business or not. So in this video, we're just gonna look at this question ways to create tax-free income in retirement through the lens of a, a person who uh, is just on their own, they don't have shares of a privately held business. And then in a few weeks, we'll flip the coin and we'll look at the same issue again through the lens of someone who does own shares of a private business. Before we cover off those, first we should talk about the difference between taxable income and cash flow. This is a super common misconception that we find. Now in retirement, priority number one is, is cash flow, not necessarily taxable income. Taxable income is the kind of income that shows up on your tax return. Uh, you're receiving it or you're drawing it from a place that requires you to pay tax on it in the year that you take it from that spot. So an example could be a RIF account, a withdrawal from that RIF account, or a dollar of pension income. Every dollar that you take from these places, it's gonna show up on your tap on your personal tax return. You're gonna get a, a T4 in some fashion based on the money that's coming from these different places. Now, there are different ways to create cash flow that do not require you to pay tax. Now, tax matters because in general, folks just don't feel ready for that retirement jump. They're not sure how much they'll need, period, let alone after factoring in the taxes that will also be due on their income. A, a recent study from H&R Block found that 52% say they actually feel unprepared for retirement. And so that's why we're dealing with this issue here today. By the way, if we haven't ever met, I'm Steve Willems. I'm a wealth advisor with the Willems Wealth Planning Group out here in BC. We started this channel uh, to help you plan for your own retirement, helping you think about ways to arrange your investments, your income streams, and ideally have you reduce the amount of tax that you pay along the way. So let's get prepared and spotlight these tax-free sources of cash flow for Canadians in retirement. Now, up first is TFSA withdrawals. So if you have a tax-free savings account, money set aside in it, any withdrawals that you make from that account will not show up on your tax return. So if you put in $10,000 into this account and it's grown to $20,000 and you take out the full value, the full $20,000, you will not pay tax on that $20,000. Now, technically that, that grew in value, it doubled, right? It grew from 10,000 to $20,000. In other accounts, it might have different tax treatments, but if that withdrawal is occurring from a tax-free savings account, that withdrawal will not show up on your tax return and you do not need to declare that income. Up next, number two, is uh, withdrawals from a non-registered account in certain circumstances. What are those circumstances? If the cost base of your portfolio in your non-registered account, off, sometimes it's called an open account or a personal investment account, if your cost base on those investments matches the current market value of those holdings, then you could technically withdraw that capital and that would not produce a taxable capital gain for you. Conversely, perhaps inside your non-registered account, you have a portfolio of assets and some have done well and maybe some have done poorly. One way to produce tax-free income is to pair off those transactions. So let's say you had one fund that had doubled in value and one that had halved in value and you had a $5,000 gain in this one and a $5,000 loss in this one, what you could do if you needed to produce extra income is you could pair off those two holdings. You could sell both the gain and the loss. And in the year that that occurs, that's gonna essentially produce a wash. Like it's the, the gain is gonna get offset by the loss in the same year that that's realized when you sell those assets. And so that's gonna give you an option to pull that uh, those those values out tax-free as well. You're essentially just pairing these two things together. The third option uh, in terms of tax-free income in retirement would be proceeds from the sale of a principal residence. In Canada, we're 
uh, fortunate enough with property values that have uh, risen quite dramatically in the last number of years. And all of those gains, assuming you can apply for the principal residence exemption in Canada, will mean that your property is going to be free from tax when you sell it down the road. Now, there are certain exclusions to this. Let's say you have a well, 100 acre property and some of it's used for farming and some of it's used for personal use. You know, those, those are gonna be some of the scenarios where, you know, extra care and attention is gonna be needed to figure out if, you know, how much of that is, is actually tax free to you. But for the average Canadian where they're living in town and they've got their kind of detached property, um, generally speaking, the full amount of that, uh, of that home sale is gonna be tax free. And so if you're looking to create extra income and you're looking at your balance sheet, what assets are available to fund tax free income streams for you, well, selling your home is certainly going to be an option. Up next is perhaps one that you haven't heard of. Many people haven't heard of this one. It's what's called the pension income tax credit. Now this pension income tax credit is a specific credit available in the year that you turn 65 and above. It doesn't apply as much or as helpfully uh, if you're below the age of 65, but if you are 65 or older and you have pen qualifying pension income, so this would be a RIF withdrawals, payments out of uh, RPP, a registered pension plan, um, pension income, essentially, the first $2,000 will apply, uh, allow this credit to be applied and it will allow the first $2,000 of pension income coming out of those plans to be tax free uh, to the person who's receiving it. Again, sometimes if maybe if you don't need the income, what you might do in the year that you turn 65 is even if you don't need the income, you'll convert a portion of your RRSP to a RIF account and pay out just a $2,000 payment out of it because by and large, most of that $2,000 is then gonna be coming to you free from tax because there's an offsetting pension tax credit to offset that income. The next bucket of tax-free income for retirees in Canada is the idea of inheritances. Now, this is different than in the US. In the US, there is inheritance tax and their estate tax laws are completely different than what we find here in Canada. But in Canada, uh, if you receive an inheritance from a family member, their estate pays any required estate tax bills. When it comes to you, it is coming to you tax-free. So if mom and dad uh, pass away and there is ho a home and a bank account and a vehicle and some cash savings, that's all gonna go into a big pot and a state pot that's gonna go through probate, get settled out based on what the will says. And by the time it's coming into your bank account, that value is going to be free from tax. And for some families, this can be a significant amount of money that is now coming to you tax-free. You never had to pay tax on that money. Very, very different than receiving, having a, a million dollars in your RRSP or half a million dollars in your RRSP, where technically all of those dollars you still have to be paying tax on here in the case of an inheritance coming to you, this value is coming to you tax-free. So it's really a nice, it builds a lot of flexibility into the retirement plans that we're seeing with most clients. And so certainly uh, an interesting piece to incorporate into your planning. Now, the second last item is uh, the GIS, Guaranteed Income Supplement. This is uh, an allowance that's available to folks who have lower incomes in Canada. It's available uh, in the year that you turn 65 and beyond, and it's income tested. So a single person needs to be making less than $21,000, uh, technically $21,168 in 2023 here. A married couple needs to have a combined household income of less than $27,000, $984 uh, to qualify. Now, to distinguish old age security, which is another pension source that you would potentially receive in retirement, that is a fully taxable um, benefit paid for by the government of Canada. GIS, however, however is, is totally tax-free. Potentially, if these were your only income sources, you could be getting you know, seven, nearly $700 of income taxable from OAS, and your GIS could potentially be paying you an extra $1,043, again, based on 2023 values, and that, and that additional monthly amount, potentially, if you have no other sources of income, could be coming to you completely tax-free. Those are the kind of the core building blocks in terms of the tax-free buckets or places that you can be drawing income from in ways that are not going to be having an impact on your personal tax return 
every single year. There is technically one other one, and I alluded to this at the very start of the video. It's kind of a dirty one, though, and most people wouldn't consider it a source of income. It's lottery winnings. In Canada, if you ever win the lottery, uh, lottery winnings don't show up on a tax return for you. Uh, if you win the, you know, the, the, pull the baby bowl of bingo out and you win, win that massive uh, that massive lottery winning, uh, that, that will not be forming part of your taxable income. In the U.S., we hear about these massive billion dollar uh, you know, lotteries in the U.S., all of that is applicable to income tax. In Canada, we don't have uh, those those rules, and so that net that full uh, that full amount goes through to you uh, to win it. I wouldn't necessarily call lottery winnings an investment strategy. Certainly not a dependable stream of income in retirement. But hey, if that happens to be you, gosh darn. I, uh, I wish I was you, that's pretty fantastic. So these are the biggest sources of tax-free income that you can personally draw on in retirement. I hope that was helpful. Hopefully there's something there for you to grab onto. If this was helpful, give it a like. Love to have a, you subscribe to the channel as well. Comment on which of these you think is most critical for you. Again, many thanks. Uh, we'll again see you next time. Take care.